So Russell, we just got out of a very intense, very sweaty hour and a half yoga session. We're here in the cafe at the yoga studio right now. How are you feeling? I'm a little weak right now. Feeling good though. You feel How good, are you right? Feeling? Yeah. I mean, I do it every day for probably 20 years. That's it's, amazing. You know, it's, it, the idea is, you know, you don't push yourself too much. It's be graceful, you know. And it, the practice is that we smile and breathe in every pose, right? Every difficult pose, we smile and breathe. And so if we can't, if our breath is not uh, graceful and if it's not smooth, and, and, um, then, then we, should, we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't twist into a pose that, that we can't breathe. The idea is to get the breath uh, to be graceful and for you to be graceful. And you take that same idea that you smile and breathe in every pose off the mat into life. And so that's what yoga is. That's the yoga practice. And yoga is very much spiritual as well as physical. Well, yeah, the yoga practice is, in fact, the, the physical practice is the last of the eight parts of yoga. Um, yoga is a whole science for, for enlightenment. So the physical practice is a part of it, but it's a small part of it. And it's actually pretty amazing how much it works your body. I mean, from the outside looking in, it doesn't look that difficult. But when you're actually doing it yourself, well, it's a workout. It is. The more, you know, it's the idea of, of, of connecting. You know, when you're standing in Tadasana or in mountain pose, you can sweat. Because you look, you're pulling all this up and in, and you have your bundas up. So there's a lot to it. The more you, you're learning all the time. You never stop learning. You've been doing this for 20 years, as you said, pretty much every day. I mean, a man in your position who's involved with so many different businesses, I mean, how do you even find the time to do that? A lot of people in your position don't put physical activity at the top of the agenda. Well, if it was only physical activity, I probably wouldn't. But every morning I, I, I take 20 minutes to meditate and evening. And every day I take an hour and a half of my practice. The idea of moving prayer, like to move with your breath for an hour and a half. This is a practice so that you can move in, in life that same way. You become so much more effective. You, you accomplish so much more if you take this time for yourself. And, you know, and the idea of taking care of your first chakra first and then being a good servant to the world second and third and through the, all the chakras. The idea it starts at home. You know, and so you get yourself together. If you don't have 20 minutes in the morning for yourself for meditation, then you probably need two hours. Let's talk about the music in the class because it was interesting to me. I expected something a little different. I expected, you know, spa music, that kind of spiritual spa music. music. They, yeah, they were playing all sorts of stuff in well, there. So the, the, the Jiva Mukti practice, this particular place, uh, it very much into Nada Yoga sound. And yes, they'll play Krishna Das and Bhagavan Das and some of the spiritual, um, the, the people who sing in Sanskrit, which is the holy language, and they play lots of that stuff too. But they play commercial music. The idea of music brings you to presence. Music brings you to, to, to a, a, a space where the brain can be still. It can focus, single point focus. When you meditate, you want single point focus. You ever read a book, and when you're reading that book, the words, you, you're so into them, you forget to breathe. And you've been in a car accident and everything moves slow. Yeah, yeah. This is what it looks like. This is the idea. And, and music brings you to that kind of stillness, you know, where, where you see things. You know, the idea of enlightenment, if you would drive a car and you were enlightened and moving with your breath, right, and connection, you might not miss one flower. You might be driving and see everything. Basketball players in the zone. You know what that is. I, you don't yeah. know, but the ball players know when they get in the zone, they can throw the ball over their shoulder. Yeah. The, 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 the rim is like an ocean. You can't miss it. Like throwing a rock in the ocean when you're hot and when you're in a zone. This idea of being in union, you have moments, you know, through running, where the breath is your soundtrack. You have moments when you're playing sports where everything moves slow. So athletes relate to this because they have these experiences. The idea of yoga is to have that lasting experience. It's not only it comes and goes. And through meditation, it's a practice of bringing you to this space. So you want to get to the zone, meditation helps if you're a ball player. And the physical practice, what do you smile and breathe? Eh? Ujjayi breath, every pose, the breath connected to the movement. This is a practice to bring you to the kind of uh, enlightenment that, that you have uh, sparks of it all the time. As a runner, you get it. As a ball player, you get it. As an athlete, you, you're, you're, everything opens up and the world moves slow and you see everything unfolding. This is how we want to live. And the yogis believe you can live this way all the time. So yoga is something that can actually be beneficial for every type of sport. 
every time oh, a, a basketball player who wants to be in, you want to get hot. You want the, the rim to get big. You know how big the rim gets. But when it's big, it's because you're open. Your breath is connected. You're awake. And this kind of awake, awakened consciousness is what every athlete wants. And so yoga is a practice of moving towards this light. And this is the light that inspires the greatest performances in, in sports. Let's talk about music and sports and their connection. How would you say music and sports kind of inspire each other and complement each it's other? It's the same. How does that the music, work? beautiful music, brings all the attention. When you, when you meditate, maybe you'll have a mantra. And you repeat this mantra and everything else will disappear. That single pointed focus. Music brings the mind to a laser focus. All both sides of the brain focus right on that beautiful melody. When you focus on the melody, the rest of the things disappear. This kind of single point of focus is why we practice yoga. What music do you listen to when you're, you're getting ready for yoga? You're, you're getting into that mindset or even, you know, for a big meeting. I mean, what, what music drives you? It changes. Yeah. You know, it depends on the mood. You know, you have driving music. You can listen to old Public Enemy record or new records or, you know, hip hop records. Or you can listen to dance records. Or listen to, I listen to all kinds of um. Manorma is uh, the Sanskrit teacher here, these beautiful little chanting records, and then the Bhagavan Das and Krishna Das. Rick Rubin produces artist Krishna Das, this beautiful voice. He sings oh, really? this beautiful, uh, and you hear them in all the yoga studios. Uh, the, the Rick's, Rick Rubin, you can hear him I, in everything. I have no idea. You hear Rick Rubin's no records idea. from wow. Slayer to <laughs> Krishna Das. Oh, wow. <laughs> he does it all from, from um, death metal to m most beautiful music about God. There was a teacher, my first teacher, Steve Ross played loud rap music all the time. He had been a monk. Yeah. Plays loud rap music. 20 years ago, his teacher, Steve Ross, he still teaches. Yoga teacher. In, yeah, in Brentwood. Yeah. And he's very popular. But he understood the idea of being happy and awake. And music makes you feel good. You know, they say, oh, that's bad music. But no, there's no bad music. If it grabs the attention and, and clears the mind, it promotes happiness. What music do you think helps you perform at your utmost, like when it, when it comes to physical performance? You know, I, it, it depends. You depend can have some well, yeah. deeply spiritual music with the most beautiful Sanskrit chanting and it can make you want to continue. Or you can hear a loud public enemy record that can do the same. It really is, you know, people say, what's your favorite record? And sometimes I say the one that's on the radio. More often than, than not, I can say that. The one that's nice, that feels good right now. You can't, you know, you don't want to define what experiences in life are your favorite because it's, it's where is your... You know, the most difficult experience can be the most beautiful. And you, if you're awake, then you find that each moment has something new to offer, something different. Yeah. yeah. We hear music from some of the biggest artists featured in major sporting events. For example, Machine Gun Kelly, WrestleMania, as was Flo Rida, you have Faith Hill being used by the NFL. Working in the music business yourself, as you have for years, have you seen music, the music industry, evolve to cater to the needs of sporting events, of athletes, of, you know, trying to give them that drive? I don't think that, I, I, I don't know that they've evolved for that purpose. I know that music is always connected to performance because music, again, clears the noise and makes people more capable. Why do you think so many artists idolize athletes and vice versa? So many athletes want to be rappers or singers and vice versa, The right? rhythm when they performance. Yes, I want to cut you up. It's the rhythm. Basketball is like rap. You know, like, it's like you know, a good guitar riff. Football, you know, it's like, because, again, they both inspire that kind of, that kind of focus. And again, that focus is the key to, to all, all of um, all performance. And, and so they, 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 there's rhythm in, in playing ball, you know. So I think that there's a connection there. And those are both things that really take up the mind, take up the attention. They're not, they, they, they demand full attention. To be a good musician, you have to be in the music. Yeah. To be a good athlete, you have to be wide awake. Yeah. I heard you're actually pretty amazing at softball. Well, who told Is you that? <laughs> Who told you I that? just heard a little birdie told me you're, uh, you're like semi-pro or something. <clears throat> I'm 54. I'm nobody's pro. <laughs> I don't know if I can run around the bases. I haven't played in a long time. But, I, but that used to be your no, sport? I, no, no, hardball was my sport. Okay. And, you know, I, played, you know, I played different sports. I don't play now a lot. 
I think the idea of being graceful and just moving circulation and the energy through your body in a good way. You know, I want to live a long time. So I'm not really into like competitive sports that are hurtful to my body. That's for me right now. And yeah. I come to a certain age, I just like, I don't want to injure nothing. I like it. I like, you know, I like the lower the information, not promote more. And I think, you know, if, if happiness was, or if well-being was in, in percentage, say 50% happy thoughts, 25% workouts and, and yogic practices and things to promote circulation, and then 25% diet. This, this would be 100% of what you need for well-being. You know, like, I, don't, I eat a plant-based diet. I was about to ask you about nutrition and I'm, how that, that plays a role. I mean, that's... Yeah. I don't eat any animal product at all. No dairy, no egg, no fish, no meat of any kind. Um, and I've seen you out at events and you actually bring your own drink with you. Sometimes. I do drink a lot of green vegetable juice too. I think it's good for you. Yeah. Feels good. How important is nutrition? I mean, with, with yourself, but also, you know, again, with these artists that we were talking about who, who need to be in shape for their, their careers. Well, if we're talking about athletes, you know, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of electric stuff that comes from food, and you could eat, you know, animal product, and it could make you, you know, rough. Uh, but I don't know that any of it, you know, would do anything but in the long run, but, you know, lots of athletes you know, live till 40 and lots of yogis live to 100 and, and lots of vice versa. But, you know, but the idea of lengthening your organs and not hurting them and, and putting circulation in your body, you know, the difference between a contortionist who dies at 40 and a yogi who dies at 100. They're both stretching, they're both lengthening. One is crunching the organs. One is being rough on his organs. One is feeding the organs air and, and, uh, and opportunity. And it's a big difference. 